Glenn, hi, welcome and thank you for joining the interview. A pleasure. So, you are an independent journalist. I very much enjoy the stuff you're writing and sharing. Let's talk about marketing, media relations and community development by open source companies and projects. Is there any advice of the top of your head that you can Something give? I feel quite strongly about is that uh, it's no longer appropriate to send out press releases. I mean, I ignore all press releases. I'm not interested in pre-packaged information. Um, I'm much more interested in a relationship with someone who knows what they're talking about. So it's important for companies and PR agencies to, to actually say something worth listening to because journalists nowadays just aren't interested in the kind of standard packaged information. They won't just reuse it. They'll, they'll want it as a starting point for their own investigation. So really you've got to offer a kind of resource for them, say how can we help you, you know, what are you interested in, these are interesting things we've come across. It's really sharing information rather than saying this is the press release, you know, will you write about it? That's not how it works anymore. So a good PR agency actually pitches a story to you and acts like a filter. They know what is interesting to you or exactly. not? It's absolutely crucial that a PR agency knows what you're interested in. There's nothing worse than people sending stories to me about stuff that I'm not interested in. I mean, it annoys me and I'm less likely to listen to them next time because it shows they haven't done their work. And it's an insult to me because my time is very limited, like everyone's. And if they're wasting my time with information I'm not interested in, it shows they're not working and they're wasting my time. So. The more they target to me, the more respect I have for them. And I do have respect for good PR people. People to say, I saw your article three weeks ago. Have you heard about this story here? Or we've heard this new rumor of one of our clients. You know, this seems to be the same sort of thing. And if you pitch it in those terms, it may well be something that, you know, I haven't heard about. And I'll say, well, that's interesting. Send me information. Um, and the other thing to bear in mind is that because time is of the essence, I don't really want to you know, meet up with a person, I just want a quick bit of information and then if that's appropriate I'll follow that up. So don't keep pushing me because the more you push me the more I'm just going to you know, ignore you. So I guess open source is not a differentiator these days, so you cannot really create buzz by saying we're open source now or since right at the start. Well, I, I think you're right that open source has become much more sort of generally understood, but you can be a good open source company and a bad open source company. So I think the more you can demonstrate that you're working with the community and that you're actually not just you know, free riding or just using the latest buzz, but that you are really an open source player, then that earns respect amongst developers, it earns respect amongst the community, and, and ultimately earns respect amongst the users because it shows that you understand what it's about and you're not just jumping on a bandwagon. How important have social media become for open source companies and projects such as Twitter, Facebook, G+. Well, speaking as a journalist, I think you know any journalist that isn't on a social network, probably Twitter or Identica, just isn't doing their job because so much information comes through first there. I mean, every story I would say that I hear about, I hear about first on the social networks. Not so much Facebook. I, I, I think that's more for you know people just chatting, which is well and good. But for professionals, I think Twitter, Identica, and G. Google Plus are really indispensable and if a journalist isn't on there or if a PR company isn't on there or if a marketing department isn't on there they're not doing their job properly because it's the fastest medium for getting information out. The Meshable founder recently announced on his blog that he will found a company and he also described how he actually mined the web for alpha geek topics. Do you do something similar? Well, I, I do it subliminally in the sense that uh, I spend most of the day online looking constantly at Twitter. I, I, I read about a thousand blogs a day. And so I'm constantly sifting through. So in a sense, I am. But I don't do it in his formal process. I, I just scan very quickly. And when I start to see trends, I start pulling those trends together until it finally turns into an article. So it's a kind of subconscious approach rather than a conscious one. But you're absolutely right. I mean, there's this flood of information. And really what journalists have to do, and to a lesser extent PR people, is to try and master that information information and then sort of get it to the public in a form that they can digest. What are the big topics and trends you're watching? Well, I think probably the, the crucial one is, is how the governments of the world are starting to fight back against the internet. I mean, we've, we've basically had 10, 15 years of the internet growing and becoming more powerful and now the governments have realized that it's actually a threat to them. So the biggest instance of that is the Suppression of Piracy Act in America which uh, there were meetings two days ago, which, if it goes through, will really destroy the internet as we know it. It'll give the Americans the power to switch off any website anywhere in the world. I mean, it's, you know, it's just extraordinary and insane. I mean, it'll, it'll really t set us back 20 years. 
but for customers like ours, you know, w which open source companies would you like to write most about, or which ones are you still looking for? Well, um, I mean, today, as you know, I've been talking about open data. And I think that open data is going to be one of the real growth areas. I think open source, in a sense, is done. Uh, you know, everyone's starting to use it. All of the main niches are filled. The main players have become established. There isn't going to be much more that's great. I mean, it's just working very well. People, you know, Red Hat is now a billion dollar per year company. So open source has made it. Open data, perhaps, is where all the new action is because there's this flood of new information coming from governments, from other sources, and people are starting to do really exciting things which haven't been possible before, and they're inventing a new field. So I think we're going to see a lot of really exciting new companies, small startups particularly, tremendous opportunity for just one or two people to get together and do something interesting. Let's talk about marketing a bit. Is there any advice you could give? Oh, just be honest. I mean, there's nothing worse than, you know, falsity in, in marketing. And the more honest and authentic you are, then the more that's appreciated, especially in this world of openness. You can't get away with tricks. You can't get away with lying. You know, you'll be found out. And when you are found out, you'll be punished. So the more honest you are, the better you will be perceived by all players. Is that just for a small or medium-sized company, or is it true for large corporations? For everyone. In fact, probably more so for large companies, because there's a lot of skepticism about large companies. They're perceived as, you know, essentially bullying and using their power. And if they don't show a certain humility, then they're going to get punished. And, and it's very easy for those big companies to fall. And we're already seeing a lot of large companies that used to be very powerful, not so powerful in the new world. And that's going to continue. The ones that don't adapt to the new world are going to fall by the wayside. Great, thanks so much, Glenn. My pleasure.